before we jump into this, it's amazing to be here with this man. I feel like there's a lot of history with this name. What you thinking, Rampage? Man, fuck that Jones name, man. <laughs> fuck that name. <laughs> fuck that whole name. That, that derailed my whole career. I was planning on getting my belt back. Ugh, Rampage. Nah, it's all good. It's, it's all good. good. We got Mr. Jones in the house. <laughs> oh, I'm, can I talk now? You live. They, they know who it is? I'm live? They don't know who it is. Listen, listen, this is Chandler James Jones. <laughs> and I want to say, I want to start off first by starting off by saying uh, happy Martin Luther King Day. Today was his birthday, correct? Yeah. yeah. Today was his birthday. Yesterday was my mom's birthday. Two very important people in my life. Um, actually, I want to talk about the tattoo. It's, it's in Memphis, Tennessee. I have a tattoo over my chest. It's called Mason Temple Church of God in Christ. Um, actually, it's a very prestigious place. Actually, it's, it's a private, it's private property. I got it tatted on my chest. Um, I'll show y'all. I will show y'all, but I ain't gonna take my shirt off. All right. uh, we've seen enough of that on live. <laughs> Rampage, I, I wanted to bring him in here today because Chandler Jones, I feel like, is one of the most misunderstood people in sports right now. Phenomenal football player, Super Bowl champion, played with the Raiders. He's been showing me support for years when he's at the height of the game, making an incredible plays. <clears throat> I'm losing audio right here. And making incredible plays. Um, something about him that I always loved is he always showed support. He always checked in on me. And uh, he, he was always there for me. So while the internet's going crazy, talking loud, I thought it was important to get him out here and give him a platform where we can give him an honest, fair shake, not how the media likes to turn things. Yeah. Let him just talk. And I felt like there's no one better to do that than you with how, uh, you know, genuine and just easy, easy going you are. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm um, curious to, to, you know, hear some of the stories because we heard like the other side. I want to hear the true story. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I've had I've had like um, baby mama drama before in my yeah. life. Hell, I got a bunch of baby mamas. <laughs> and sometimes, man, they be your worst enemy, bro. Worst enemy. Yeah, honestly, to be honest with you. Oh, what was that? Oh. What you got going on over there? <laughs> to be honest with you, um, it was a lot of baby mama drama. And my baby mama, she hates the word baby mama. So I'm going to use the word baby mama. She always say, call me the mother of your child. I'm not a baby mama. What? But uh, but yeah, I mean, the reality is, yeah, you're you are a baby mama now. She is, and I'm not even gonna say her name to give her that clout. They yeah. call it they call it clout. Yeah. We're not giving you that clout, miss. Tell me, tell me about it. Yeah, how, how long you been with her? I was, I've been with her for six years. I've been with her six years. Um, it was a it was a we was I met her in a bar though. I met yeah. her in a bar. Yeah, yeah, you know how it is. It's I, 2020. It was 2020. 2020. Yeah. 2020. No. no, 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 no. That's six only, years. That's only four years. Yeah, I do the math. So, was, 2018, probably. 2018. 2018. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I met her. I was doing a very, a very vulnerable time in my life when I met her, and uh, I kind of clinged on to her. Told her I loved her early, and it was, and it was, we was both in love. It was, it was oh, she got some good pussy. That's hey. what it is. You, just say it. <laughs> we just say it, but keep it real. That. We, yeah. But look, but but long story short, to be honest with you. Um, I, I I was moving fast. I knew I was moving fast, and we had a kid early. She got some, she got good head too. Yeah, look, look, this, <laughs> this nigga is ruthless. He, hey, he's a ruthless vato. <laughs> look, I'm gonna start talking crazy on here now. Oh, hey, look, yeah, I'm talking crazy. Yeah, Ramp, and Rampage yeah. can talk crazy. I can, hey, I can fight too, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey! Don't start that, man. I'm having flashbacks. You look too much like your brother. I probably can't get him, but I can get your ass. I see you hit pads. But look, but look, honestly, honestly, even to clear the smoke in the air. Yeah. Um, I have no problem with the Las Vegas Raiders. I love everybody on that team. Um, unfortunately, I did post a few things that that may had not be fully accurate. I did post some shit on Twitter. People did get fired that I think they should have been fired. Um, but I love everybody in the Raiders. I love the coaching staff. I love the players, the star players. Uh, Max Crosby is my brother. Devontae Adams, they're my brothers. But unfortunately, um, my my baby mama, she had enough power to get me off of the team, to get me into jail, get me into psych wards, all because of a restraining order that I did break trying to help. So to clear the smoke in the air, the, the all the craziness is all from from one person, and and uh, I take offense to to having a child with the wrong person. Love her, I still love her because she's the mother of my child. But I take credit to that. So I want to say sorry to the fans, sorry to everybody that that thought they were going to see fifty five out this this year and they didn't. Um, I'll make it up to you. Hopefully, we'll see. Man, I'm telling you, uh, bitter baby mamas, man. They, I, I hate when I hate when a chick just lie on you and lie on dudes and stuff like that. I've, I've been lied on before. Um, fortunately, it never got out uh, to the media. Um, I was training out in England, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know which baby mama did. I got two two crazy baby mamas. One one passed away though. Got uh, R.I.P. One of them passed so. away. So and, you widowed. No, 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 no. I wasn't. These, these like college. These like okay. from college, right? Okay. They was, okay. they was never my girlfriends. Neither one of them, but they gave me two, um, you know, good, you know, good kids. 
two two boys, my two oldest boys. But uh, one of them, I kind I kind of think I kind of think which one it was. I kind of think it was my oldest mom. But I was in England, and um, she says she called uh, child protective service and said I was abusing my son and stuff like that. And they call anonymous, right? Mm-hmm. And then they they call me, and when you call somebody overseas, you know the phone ring different. Mm-hmm. And they was asking me and talked to me like, uh, "How long you been in England?" Because I told her I was out of town. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "I've been here for like a week." They said, oh, okay, never mind. I said, well, why are you guys calling me? I'm the father. She said, well, we got none of this tip that you was abusing your son. I was like, when? They said, yesterday, because <laughs> they didn't know I was out of the country. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So if, you know, if I if I hadn't been out of the country, it could have blown up. They, they can they can right. do that. They just say anything and people take their word for it, and that's not fair for us. And they got they got this thing out now called the crisis team. I don't know if you've heard of that. No. But it's a group of people there. They're just under the police. And uh, they sometimes they show up with the police, which they did with me, threw me on the ground. But sometimes they'll throw, they'll come up by themselves and they say, "We want to check on your mental health," and they they put you into a hospital. What what they did to me for three weeks, not fun. Are you in the hospital for three weeks? They put me in a mental hospital where I couldn't get my phone call, no cell phone, I couldn't get visits. It was it was, for me honestly, it opened my eyes to a lot. Um, I got to learn a lot about myself. Um, but honestly, I got to see how how psych works work and and. There, there's a lot of same people in psych wars. I'll say that. I was one of them, but it just made me sad because those people have no power. They have no power. Uh, a lot of times they were saying that you have no mobile assistant. A mobile assistant is a person that speaks for you. Mm. There's a lot of people in these psych wars that I've been in. I've been in psych wars in Vegas. I've been in psych wars in, in Arizona. And there's a lot of people in these psych wars that are very sane and sitting there talking to me intellectual just like us three. Yeah. And, and it hurts my heart that they got to sit through there and, and they, their family members are, my brother, my brother Arthur, not John, Arthur, he's the one that put me in a psych ward. Yo, he thought, he's the oldest? He's the oldest. He thought something was real, really wrong with me, though. He thought he had friends. I had a friend that was living in my house. He thought she was closer than she what she was. Mm. That's the one you can call a, a good head and good pussy. Because <laughs> <laughs> she, I, get, I, I told her to get in my house. I told her, she could, you can live in my house while, while I play in Vegas for a year, stay in my house. This bitch told my brother, this bitch went and told my brother, oh, uh, he's Chandler's being, he's suicidal and he's homicidal. So he took her word and said, all right, I'm, the, I'm Chandler's guardian. I'm 33 years old. I don't need no fucking guardian. I'm Chandler's guardian. We're we going to put him in a psych ward. I was in there for three fucking weeks, no phone call, sitting there jacking off, coming to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, the the thought of mental yeah. health. Oh, yeah, you laughing. Yeah, Look at my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You serious. The, yeah. Thought of, the thought of mental health right now in society is a very unique subject because a lot of people do need it. A lot of people don't have the ability to speak about it freely. And a lot of people don't have the resources or the money. It costs a lot of money for the people that really do have the issues to try to help them alleviate the days. I think the most important part is a solid support system and the team around you. One thing I've always seen around you though, is the chemistry between your brothers. One of them's a Super Bowl champion played with the Ravens. One of them's John Jones. I think you're familiar with him. Yeah. I'm and familiar with you're him. familiar with him. And so both of these brothers, I felt like even when I I watch you guys FaceTime and talk. Your family dynamics very tight. Mm-hmm. They look out for you. You guys are able to conversate in, in a healthy way. You guys aren't yelling at each other. And mm-hmm. the most important part that I have seen about you in interacting with you over the years and the weeks and in person is that you're very aware. Yeah. You're very conscious of everything. Yeah. You know what's funny. You know what's not. You know what's too much. When you go on live, you go, look, everybody's going to make CTE jokes. Yeah. And you're like, I don't know why. I'm just messing around. I always yeah. like making music, but because I put it on live, now yeah. I'm a weirdo. Like, I, I think that the misinterpretation now of people is if they post things that aren't normal on social media, all of a sudden something's wrong with them. Right. If they're doing something that's too much, all the thing, you know, people have these perceptions and opinions of people and it just goes so far that it can really damage someone's career. Where do you feel like society or social media has played a part in kind of labeling where you're at now as a person and when, where you were going? Yeah. I honestly, I feel like brothers, um, siblings, relatives, they're always going to bash heads always. And, um, like me and my brothers do, we always bash heads. We always argue and somebody's always mad at somebody. That's just how brothers are. That's how you raise, how you raised. But each and every one of us would die about each other. We would. That's just how we was raised. That's our, we would die about each other. But but going into the conversation of the CTE thing, I think it's funny. And me and Antonio Brown were actually going to run a, a podcast called CTE Podcast because they're saying that we both have CTE. So um, I don't know the other two words, the other two words in the acronym CTE, but I know the T stands for trauma. And I know it's not blunt force trauma. I know it doesn't also mean that you got hit in the head too many times. That doesn't mean that. CTE is not real. I don't believe it's real. Cause we didn't um, hear about it back in the day. It's not real. No. CT is not real. The T in trauma could be being from being molested as a kid, from from things that you went through as a, from high school, and that could be trauma, mental trauma, emotional trauma, but not blunt force. Got punched in the head. Got 
too many tackles in the head. But people think CT, they're making fun of it. They're making fun of it, saying, oh, you're dumb. Everybody going to have some kind of memory loss. That, that, that's You get old and get Alzheimer's. Some people, some bloodlines, you might have it earlier than others. That's, just, that's reality. But uh, there's ways that the media, they put out, what Donald Trump say, fake news. Yeah, there's ways that, that, that people put out fake news and say, let's scare this group of people. Let's scare these athletes. Because before I got out of the NFL, I was when I heard the word CTE, it had me tackling like this. You know what I'm saying? Back when, when I, before I heard the word CTE, I was banging. I wasn't putting my head in Lauren and banging people in the head. But I was tackling. It, it's scaring people, you know what I'm saying? I, I mark my words, in 2050, there will be no NFL. Mm. 2050, there will be no NFL. You ain't gonna just do it. No, it, it's getting too soft. It's flags for, for, for pussy ass hits. It's flags for pussy hits. Yeah, I mean, the, the chronic traumatic, you know, and capital of the year, whatever that last word is, I don't even know what it means, but I do know that it's repeated trauma, right? Repeated head trauma. Right. You, do you believe in CTE or do you believe? I, I don't, I don't know uh, much about it. Um, but, um, like I talked to some boxers and stuff like that. And some, um, and you know, fighters, some are fine and some took too many punches. I don't know if it's CTE or they just took too many punches. A, a brain bruising. So it's brain, you can get, you can have brain bruising. Then all right, I could take off a few years off, but that's not permanent. Damn, CTE isn't real. Just like, just like the word uh, conspiracy. The word conspiracy isn't real. The CIA put out the word conspiracy to scare people. So when y'all catch the real shit that's happening, when y'all hear about quote unquote aliens, you hear about quote unquote underground tunnels with 8,000 people in Vegas with all these people underground, they'll say, oh, it's a conspiracy. No, nah, that's the CIA trying to cover up the shit they're doing. <laughs> I'm serious. I believe, I believe in aliens. aliens. Do I believe in aliens? Yeah, I do. You believe in aliens? Yes. I'm, like, I'm fr- I come in peace though. <laughs> <laughs> but you believe like in a big green thing that just walks the planet or like you think they're just- like- I don't want to get into what I believe because I, what I believe is far from what a lot of other people believe, but um, I, I do believe in aliens, but I don't think they come from outer space. They come from a spiritual realm. I believe they come from a spiritual I realm. I think they come from the other side of the ice wall. That's that's what I the think. The upside down world. The, the they, other side. The Hollywood calls aliens, they call it uh they call it the Night King or they call it the Demogorgons. If you watch Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. That's those are the aliens and they're trying to warn you that hey, they're right here with us. Yeah, yeah. what's that shit that happened in, in, in Miami the, at the mall? That's yeah, some, yeah. I I'm hearing different things, but I'm 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 hearing like People just blown out of proportion like it's, this this morning. I mean, Vinny could pull it up. This morning those aliens in Brazil, like three tall looking things that look like something straight out of Avengers or something some planet Thor would be on. I don't know. I don't want to get too deep down the rabbit hole. No, no, I know. I got a question. I got a serious question. Yeah. I'm going to ask you, Rampage, and I'm going to ask Bear. What do you do, right? No weapons involved. Don't, no weapons involved. Yeah. No weapons. What do you do? You wake up, you look out your front door, and you see a family, a dad, a mom, and a little, a little girl, alien. And they're standing there, and you could tell, something's telling you that, hey, they come in peace. They just need water. What do you do? I say, fuck them. I go back to bed. I don't know them motherfuckers. Okay, Okay, what do you do? They can still try to eat me, man. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. I, I place a bowl of water out and close the door. You why, put a, why they eat? Like, 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 what, like they're dogs? Like a dog. I don't know. What is that. I'm not going to say fuck them. What, what if they know some? What if they can, what if they can translate your voice and say, he said fuck us. And then you fucking get zapped. Well, well you put a bowl in it. What do they say? This motherfucker think we're a dog. Let's kill him. <laughs> Let's eat him. Look at, look at. This is the aliens in Brazil this morning. This is what they said. They said that these tall things were spotted hilltop in Brazil and people have been filming it. It's been all over TV this morning. They said they were 10 feet tall aliens and there are these weird flapping things coming from their ears and these long arms and all of a sudden aliens is out they've been trying to cover this shit up for years and all of a sudden i mean they look it looks crazy oh yeah it's mo- that's a real i thought those look like witches yeah it looks weird it's things flapping from its ears it's, it's got- too far away man it could be anything man why well, it is moving on. it is video. it is an arm i can see the way a- every time there's an alien video it's like 100 yards away yeah it's it could be it could maybe, be maybe they're not allowed to get so close to us they have but, a distance like a restraining order on us but we have like different <laughs> technology with cameras where you can zoom all the way in but but you know what people are filming on their cell phones these days yeah, yeah. see that's, yeah. that's that's one thing i think about like uh now that everybody got cameras so it's going to be harder for them to hide everything if there if there are like aliens and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, before they've been trying to just keep you know. Yeah. It's all taboo to talk about aliens, but all yeah. of a sudden the government's talking about aliens. They, they have to. I think they have to start. They have to start okaying it now because everything's being filmed and they won't have any answers. Like yeah. Like how do you explain that? How do you, know, how do you go to the CIA and the that. government? How do you be a president? How can you be the president of the United States and explain that or those UFO weird shits that we all have been seeing the shits? 
I know you have. Have you seen them? I've seen the UFO years ago. Yeah, but I'm talking about the ones that they catch in these days. The, the rich white people that's on the damn. And they think. Wait, you yeah. saw a UFO? I saw a UFO in Huntington Beach years ago. <laughs> Why are you Where? laughing when I say rich white people? <laughs> Where? That's racist. <laughs> Where did you see a uh, alien? Uh, I saw a UFO. Where? Well, one, I, I was with one of my friends, um, Anderson Goncalves, and me and him both saw it, but he won't never talk about it because he said, like, I don't want people to think I'm crazy. Hey. <laughs> so he never brought it up, but I Wait, saw everybody, it. Everybody got a little crazy. I mean, there's, oh, come on, yeah. Yeah, everybody's got their own opinions, but there's also a really unique theory that if there was aliens, they'd be so advanced, and if they were that advanced, then why haven't we had interaction Bro, with them Mike, or vice versa? Michael you know? Bisbee said he saw a um, UFO in Big Bear while we was training camp. I wasn't there that day. Up close. Mine was, like, far away. It was a bright blue light, and we we just looked at it and soon me and my friend looked at our point I'm like what as soon as I says what is that before I can get the words out it went when it shot away and yesterday when we were in here we were talking about CTE we were talking about head trauma we were talking about your ability to understand the landscape you're in right now you're excited to sit with rampage but your diet was perfect you were physically fit you were hitting a full workout you were in tune you had music you were focused phone was off like it seems like you're doing all the right things at what point does the NFL or do the teams look at you and say, okay, cool, maybe he had a slip up or maybe he was having a bad week, but the guy's in tune, he understands what's going on, he's aware of what he did, what he didn't do, he aware, he's aware of where he needs to go. At what point do they come to you and they say, all right, cool, hop back well, on a team? Well, first of all, I should, I should have started off with this. I want to say, I'm going to let you out on a little secret. Um, I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to get back to that. Mm -hmm. But I want to let Rampage know that I'm sitting here. I'm John's little brother, so I know who he fan fanboys over. And uh, before y'all fight... <laughs> He couldn't sleep. And mm. I don't I don't give a fuck who he, I'm looking you in your eyes, I'm not blinking. I don't give a fuck who he fought, who would bigger name, whatever. I'm talking to this day and he could not sleep. Mm. We all been a fan of you before him. Yeah. Before he became a UFC fighter, we was, we was picking you in the UFC game. Man. Yeah, I'm just, I just want to let you know that. That's, That's what's up. Yeah, That's what's yeah, up. But, Man, I'm going to tell you about that fight though, since yeah, we own it though. Yeah. That fight, I, he beat the best me ever. Nobody nobody ever faced, faced me like that. Mm -hmm. I, I was in the best shape. Yeah, I was in the best shape. I trained up in Denver. I trained there for a couple of couple of um, months, like two two or three months. I was running seven miles when I normally just run three miles. My first time taking supplements every day, and I, I trained my ass off. And I was like over overly confident. I'm like, I've never lost a fight been in this good shape. I was like, I'm gonna destroy this kid, mm -hmm. and he kicked the shit out of me. Yeah, he but did. I'm, I'm gonna say this about your brother. I respect him, but he's the dirtiest fighter in MMA. <laughs> the eye pokes, the, <laughs> the eye pokes, man. The, Every, the knee back. Hey, I don't, I don't, I don't think he doing on purpose. But he, he we, did this we, shit on. We purpose. all fight like that, so we all have our hands over. You he didn't see him spazzing Cap, yesterday in here. Cap, Captain Insano shows no mercy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Man, with them, hey, with them, hey, with them long ass fingers, I couldn't even do the three stooges. <laughs> Those fingers still go through this shit. <laughs> Hey, pull up the video of John Jones talking about the fight. There's a, there's a, actually, speaking of that, is, so that was a thing, huh? He couldn't sleep because there's a famous video he John Jones sleep. talking about it. He couldn't sleep, man. He, I saw he talk about Rampage. And my dad, he the biggest Rampage fan. So you got to think, if you call your dad, we call, my dad's the most spiritual person in the world. Mm. He's a pastor of a church. He's, the, he's a spiritual gangster. He's a spiritual savage. Um, so when we ever, whenever we got, get close to game time or fight time, we just card that every day. He gives us scriptures. He he could talk. I feel like he could talk to God through us for us to say, "Hey, what scripture do we?" For some reason, every time he gives us a scripture, it's talking straight to us, right to our heart. And, uh, and I remember one time I think John reached out to my dad to kind of like get that spiritual that spiritual calling. <laughs> he was just calling rampage. <laughs> he was calling rampage. I was. What do you do when your spiritual leader is calling you? He's being a fanboy. Look, maybe that's why that you got the best John. Seriously. No, and it, right it, here. Check this video. Vinny, start it from the beginning. That's why you got the best John. Check this out. There's a video of John Jones basically saying that he was having nightmares of Rampage. So with Rampage, yes, I kept having these nightmares that I would get knocked out. And it was always within the first 30 seconds of the fight. Once in a half run out, he'd run at me, swing a huge overhand right. Yeah, there was a throw right after the fight. And then another dream is the left hook. And I couldn't avoid this inevitable knockout. And my idea And it fucked me up. Wow. Him him crawl him crawling out to me, that's that's what helped him win that 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 whole mental game. It's a mental game. Mm -hmm. No one's ever done it to me before. I'm like, what the fuck is this kid doing? Yeah. Do you you don't did you wrestle at all? You have yeah. any wrestling background? Yeah, I, I wrestled good against Jones. He yeah. was surprised at my wrestling. Yeah. Because yeah. I trained really hard for him. Yeah. You know, but I started I started late. You remember I told you I quit smoking weed at yeah, 17? Yeah, 17. That's when I started wrestling. Yeah. 
Yeah, I started smoking weed at eight years old. Oh wow! Oh, Jesus. Early. Yeah, early. bro, that's I started. Early. I started everything early. Like that's in, in Memphis. Memphis, man. Memphis like that. Yeah, man. I, I should have did some more research before I got this tattoo, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's my bloodline. Though. I had to. Yeah. How, how did John start off with fighting, and you did football? John, the, the way the way John got the name Bones is how skinny he was. He's mm. all he always looked like a bag of bones in his pads. Whatever he wore, he was just always baggy. He was bones. He was bones. So. Um, I feel like I, I, I'm a mix between Art and John. Um, but John and Art, they lost all athleticism because they wrestled their whole high school careers. I think my second year after I wrestled and then I started playing basketball, the, the wrestling coach thought just because I was a Jones, I was going to be wrestling for my whole career. And because my dad was a world champ, oh, he was a state champion in wrestling. So they just thought, oh, you're all brothers going to be a champion. So they was calling me dribbling idiot and calling me all these names just because they, to get me back from, from playing basketball, from playing basketball back to the, to the wrestling mat. But, uh, but I, I'll tell you right now, this day, today, that my brother Art and John, they can't catch, they can't jump, they can't throw. They'll beat my ass. <laughs> Especially John. They, they will beat the fuck out of me. They will beat the fuck out of me. Could you beat them up when y'all was younger? Yes, I was scrapped. But I'm also the baby, so they wasn't, they wouldn't fuck with me. They, you know what I'm saying? They, they knew they would get beat by my old my oldest sister. I had a sister. And then all my mom or dad would beat the fuck out of them because I'm the baby. But I would take advantage. I'll scratch. All the scars on John's face, that's me and Art. <laughs> I'm talking about him being a man right now. He got a slash in his eyebrow. Art got a slash in his eyebrow. I throw a medicine bottle across the room. Fuck. Eye bleeding. My mom and dad used to go to work and leave us at the house. Two family house. They used to call the police. Call the police. Son us. Art, Art and John pulling out knives. <laughs> they, used to bang, they used to bang on us. They used to bang on the walls. To let us, we, was the up, we was the upstairs family. They used to bang on the walls to tell us, hey, hey, it's too noisy. We, as soon as we get in the house, six round matches. My dad was conducting it. Six <laughs> round matches. As soon as we get in the house, as soon as, I, as soon as I got home from school, I had to take off my backpack and start wrestling. Six round matches. My dad conducting it. To this day, I still got that in me. How many years did you wrestle before you started? I wrestled. I wrestled from a child, from a kid, uh, Pee Wee, Pee Wee wrestling until high school. Oh, okay. Then I started playing basketball. Oh, so you still know how to? You still oh yeah, know. oh yeah. I get, I get busy. We we wrestled. Hey, he wrestled we, we yesterday. Wrestled. He did, he did some rounds in here. Yeah, we wrestled. Oh, really? uh, well, I was sparring with that, but I'm talking about grappling. I, I, that's what the thing is. People want to box with you. Like if I ever got into a fight, I'm grabbing. You want to sit back and say, oh, who many got? How, who got many more headshots? No. I'm going to grab you, throw you to the ground, then I'm going to do what I can do to you. Go for the, you know what I'm saying, grappling. How many years uh, older is John than you? John is only two or three years older than me. Oh, okay. Yeah, two or three years older than me. Oh, shit. It's, it's a, it's I told a, Dana White to sign me that 10-day contract, and I'm trying to get back in the NFL, though, for real. I, I kill him. Boy. I'm, you miss it? You shit, miss Easy money. It was giving me $18 million a year, $17 million a year to go fuck, on, fuck these little boys up. These little kids trying to And your to baby mama hating on, on, on that? Was you was you was you doing what, what was you was you spoiling her and shit though? Yes, yes. Everything she wanted, every Chanel bag you can, every Python, every exotic, everything she got it. So I'm gonna teach you something, young buck. When you when you treat a woman like that, when you spoil a woman like that, they they get too entitled. Don't mm. ne don't ever spoil a woman like that. Damn. Mm. Don't ever do that. Make them make them make them work. Earn make it. them work. Yeah, they gotta earn it. Don't don't spoil a woman like that. They Damn. just like you know how women be like ah. Oh, I want a good guy. I want a good guy. They look for good. There's no good guys. It's bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? One, uh, uh, most women, they they want a guy to, you know what I'm saying? They don't want a guy to treat them too good. They don't want it. Mm -hmm. They just don't want it, especially when they know what type of woman they are inside. They know what type of woman they are inside. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they got to sit in front of makeup. I mean, in front of the mirror for an hour doing makeup and just looking at themselves. Yeah. They know what type of woman they are. Damn. And, and you, you you just, I, I'm, I'm not here to disrespect her, but you just, that's her. That's what she do. Hour in front, in front of the mirror, putting on makeup. Yeah. Why you got put? Why you got? Why you need an hour to change your face? Yeah. And it's like it's like a big lie, you know. <laughs> she from what I don't know nothing about, but from from what I heard, her going and lying to lying on you and shit. <laughs> she said, nah, she is. She but it sounds like a fucked up person. Nah, <laughs> yeah, nah, nah, nah. It is yeah. fucked up. Nah, it what, is what pretty she look, fucked she up. White black. Nah, she Afghanistan. Asian? Afghanistan. God damn. You went all the way to the Middle East. <laughs> nah, no Middle East. No, he he loved the Middle Eastern women. Mashallah. <laughs> I'm a proud Christian. I'm a proud. I know John don't he he praised Jesus after every fight, but that Mashallah that's a powerful word. What that mean? God willing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what's what's the relationship right now? I got then? a right here. <laughs> what's the relationship right now then with the NFL, the team, the, the family situation? Are we all good now going into the new year? Set the record it's, straight. It's good. Um, I get to see my daughter February 4th. I'm Amazing. excited about that. The whole restraining order will be over. I, I'll have some somewhat custody over my daughter. Um, between me and the NFL, the weird thing is I never really got a departure. I just, I read it on ESPN. My agent, I haven't talked to my agent. I read it on ESPN. That channel is no longer with the Raiders. 
I'm not sure if I go back to the Raiders if I try to get in. I'm not sure if I'm blackball. I'm not sure if I'm back in or back up. Like, but I, even last night, Nobu, you were you were very uh, respectful of the fact. Like, yeah, I got to go through the proper channels. I need to go talk to the team, and that's what I'm trying to. That's what I want to do. That's yeah. what I'm trying to do. But um, to be honest with you, and I know this is an exclusive interview, so we should save this. But I'm enjoying being out for the first time ever. My whole adulthood. I'm 33 years old. I have a five year old. My whole adulthood has been. You got to wake up at five. You got to be home at nine. And I, like, you know what I'm saying? The schedule, my whole adulthood, I've, I've been, I've been a professional athlete. So I'm enjoying this time off. Maybe I'll take two years off. I don't know. And I know a lot of fans want to see me play and I know I owe it to the fans, but what do I owe to myself? Mm. What do I owe to myself? My whole adulthood. And, and I know people have been calling me crazy. They've been calling me manic for the, my behavior. And I know I, I've been posting shit and I've, I've been, I've been drawing attention to myself and I, and I, I look, you want, I want to, I want to build a community for, for players after retirement because there was a part of me that was on Instagram and I felt, I felt like I was that percentile that, that's saying, Hey, I need attention. Cause I, I, I wanted attention. I posted my genitals on the internet. I don't why, you, why are you posting genitals? On I wanted the girls to see my big dick. <laughs> why? Why? Because I was, I'm single. I, I'm still single. I've been single for six years, but I've been living with my baby mama. The one that's mad now. I was living with her. So now I'm trying to expose myself to say, Hey, y'all can come fuck me. <laughs> bro, you wild, He's bro. Wild and out. The internet lasts hey, forever, bro. Hey, yeah, that's hey. okay. But but here's the thing, and and I do want to put, I do want to say this though, because I know you, I know you like the jokes. I know it's funny, but you, there is a certain line that we cross, and then people then start misinterpreting that that emotional side of being a comic or trying to be, you know, I don't want to make you feel bad, but maybe yeah. the class clown yeah. when you're not, you're, you're totally aware of what you're doing. Like yeah. you tell me before you go live, I've been talking to you on DM and, and text for the last six months. And, and like a normal person, like a normal person checking in on you, of making course. sure you're okay. Of course. I, I, I said, yo, you got to delete the mugshot from team Z as your default. That ain't going to work for me, champ. Uh, can I talk about that? Actually? Yeah, go ahead. I went to jail. Tw- I want to let people know why I went to jail. I went to jail twice for my baby mama. Uh, I went to jail for burning, uh, you know how they said I was burning furniture? Uh, well, I usually walk over to my, even though I had a restraining order, I usually walk over to my baby mama's house or drive over there and I clean up all the dog shit for my dog that she's taking care of. I clean up the dog shit and I make sure her trash is out. So one week I go over there and I make sure the trash is out and I realize that her recycling bin has a whole bunch of empty boxes, a whole bunch of empty Chanel boxes, all the boxes that I've bought her, a whole bunch of designer bags. So I said, oh, you know, I have bonfires going over at my house. Let me take this, uh, this, trash can, drive it to my house, empty it, burn it all, and bring it back. So I proceed. I get everything. I drive it to my house. I burn all the boxes because I let around a firewood, burning boxes. It's not bad, not furniture. I drive back to the house to drop off the, the recycling bin, and there's four cop cars there. And then you, you can go to TMZ for the rest of the story at your local TMZ. <laughs> but, yeah, and that happened. And when I saw that, when I saw that she had the power to go to the police, uh, I had already fallen out of love with her. And I'm, I no longer live, and I, and I know my daughter could possibly see this one day, but she needs to know what her mom did to her dad. Why, why is there mugshots of my dad? And I could cry right now, because this is serious. Mm-hmm. Why is there mugshots of my dad on the internet? But there's so many people in the jail that are wrongfully accused. All you see is Chandler was in jail. You don't mm-hmm. know why you think he burned furniture or he did some wild shit. No, that's what happened. And I want to let the world know that, the, the, that I'm an innocent man. I was in jail. There's so many wrong people in jail. That's why I want to keep it on my Instagram as long as I can because there's too many innocent people in jail. My cousin Trey, Nathaniel Cox, is in jail, wrongfully accused for, for something that he didn't do. So I want to keep that on my Instagram for a while. Yeah, you're your own man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you know, do what you want. But, I, you know, I just met you, but I advise you not to show your genitals. <laughs> That's the only thing I would say. You want to see him? <laughs> Hell no. Hey, what, got, what kind of factory he got you going wanna, on the Jackson? You want to go see the live? Oh, oh, the live. Oh, the live. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. live. No, no, no. I, just, I, just, I just advise you not to do That's the only thing. He was know. on live. Oh, he was on live. He was on live. Oh, I thought he posted it. No, 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 he was on live. And, and I was you like, watched it, huh? No. Yeah, he did. He did. He was it said, it said bear joint. I waved at him. He said, that's why he's laughing. No, he, he hit probably me. screenshot. He yeah, probably screen recorded it. Yeah, he, 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 he said, yo, hop in the live. I hop in the live. I go, oh, hell no. <laughs> he said, oh, hell no. Let me screen record <laughs> like it. Right like this. He was like, looking through his Like, he's wild. But, but, but did you get some girls in your DM after that? Oh, I definitely did. Not the right ones, but I definitely did. You I, like, I just wanted, I was trying to see something. You had some fat ones in your DM. Yes, man, I always get the fat the ones. Fat ones got the water. They, what? Make me swim. <laughs> 
Make me wanna. What's, what's the biggest? What's the biggest chick you ever smashed? Be be one hundred. Boy, she's probably about two thirty. She said, "Make me lose my breath. <laughs> Make me wanna." Look at his voice. He got a number one trending song right now. Oh, really? It's called Bill Belichick. What's that? Hey, Bill you you want to give us thirty seconds of it? That's that. So I fire him, and then hire him, Bill Belichick. Who is the fuck is Bill Belichick? <laughs> Bro, you don't know who Bill Belichick is? No. He's the most famous coach of all time. Oh, okay, okay. You Look, know I know he knows who that is. is. Look, no. what, what's he in the heat coach? I don't know. I don't watch I don't watch sports. You don't watch sports. Bro, Bro uh, New England, Bill lying. Belichick, he won six Super Bowls with the New England Patriots. He's the reason why Tom Brady is Tom Brady. Oh. Tom Brady was just a little Michigan guy. Bill Belichick said, hey, let's get that fucker. Did, did he coach you before? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, he was my coach. That's he won a Super Bowl with Bill Belichick. Oh, uh, he's he still he's still coaching. It just fired him. That's what the song was about. Why That's fire the... him? <laughs> and then, but they hired my best friend, Gerard Mayo, a nigga. And then hire him. <laughs> Man, I, I, you know what, bro? I feel bad me being an athlete and I don't really watch sports. I'm going to tell you why I don't watch sports. Mm. Growing up in Memphis, mm. we, didn't, we didn't have a team. And I remember when I went to college, everybody had starter jackets. They was, they was repping the city. Yeah. And I didn't have shit. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't have no basketball team growing up, and we didn't have a football team. Same. And um, I, I, I played football growing up, mm -hmm. you know, with the, you know, the guys in the, in the hood. But they was all adults, and they let me play football with them. But they wouldn't let me play basketball with them. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know how to play basketball. Yeah, the yeah. kids wouldn't let me play basketball with them because I was bigger than them, and I was too rough, they mm -hmm. say. So I was like, fuck sports. You right there with John and I, I would like to see one-on-one -on -one basketball with you and John. I'll fuck John I, up with some basketball. I don't know. Though. I don't know. Can he shoot who? No, he can't shoot for shit. Have he can't dribble. Him? He can't dribble. Can he dunk? He tall as No, fuck. he can't dribble. He ain't got no coordination. He can't, he, you can't throw in the ball. He won't. All what right, do you I mean was, he got no hand-like coordination? I'm talking about catching the basketball. It's different between fighting. Fighting, that's all he do. He think he an army guy. He think he a Marine. <laughs> Bro, if you go into a mind of a John Jones, he really think, like, I don't know if I should be saying it, but he think he a Marine. A Marine or a Navy SEAL? Why Whatever. You think he all of that? I'm going to tell you something. About, I'm tell you That's something. why he be fighting like that. I'm going to tell you something about He'll die for that fight. He'll die for it. I'm going to tell you something I know about your brother, though. He got a, he got a, a real strong mind. I call him Neo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. got a real strong yeah. mind. Yeah, Because the shit, the shit that he was doing, he, he was doing shit that nobody was doing, even though that, that spinning elbow, even though that shit was illegal as fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody was doing it. Because what he did, it, he spin around and hit you on the back of your head. Oh, that shit I didn't realize that. Yeah, that shit's legal as fuck. And they let him get away with it. I didn't realize that. All right, fuck. He was giving people mini concussions every time. <laughs> yeah, bro. You got to fight him, he give you a mini yeah, concussion. Bro, I had to train so hard. I had to train so hard. I got to watch out for the spinning elbow. Mm -hmm. When he switched, when he switched stands, he going to do a high kick on this side. Yeah. He's going to do yeah. this side. And you yeah. know what I'm saying? He get, you don't get in too close, so he go elbow you yeah. over the top, going to kick your damn leg out. His... He's going to eye poke you if you do anything good. <laughs> Bro, his fight IQ, his fight IQ is insane. Yeah, the, uh, is that, was that his um, coach, uh, what's his name, Jackson? Jackson, okay. yeah, Greg Jackson, over in, that's the reason why he still live out there. Oh, he still I tell him he should move from there. He should move to LA or somewhere. Is Hollywood. he still training with Greg Jackson? Yeah, yeah, he's still out there. He just, he had that surgery. I, uh, call your brother and tell him, I, well, I owe Greg I Jackson an ass whooping. I should have called him. I should Put him on FaceTime. I'm going to call him right now. See, see if they know each other. Yeah, I'm going to say, you know this guy? <laughs> I'm gonna call him. Say, call so if I'm gonna play basketball, I'm, I'm gonna leg kick him. I'm, oh, see, I'm, if I'm gonna bleed kick him while we playing basketball. Say John Bones Jones. He ain't gonna pick up. He don't pick up. John, John be in his own world. Oh, hey, John, what you doing? I'm, I'm on set right now. Bad service. Bad service. I can't talk. Let's see. He probably on the toilet. You taking a shit, Smokey? <laughs> Smokey taking a shit. We'll, we'll try him next time. Yeah, he should have. Uh, yeah. Well, at least, at least you least your FaceTime. It. Yeah. He picked, at least he picked up. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I saw you guys talking all morning. The guys over here, they're talking about life. They're making sure each other's good. Like, yeah. I, I feel like you get a bad shake because you just went... You've been so conservative on your social media for so long private, as, a, as, a, private. As, a, as an athlete. Very private. And then you went full court press with like, you know, you got your rope out. You're making Bill Belichick songs. Yeah. You're, you're doing crazy things at three in the morning. You got the lights on. Looks like you're at the strip club. Right. Like, so because of all that, you j it just went from zero to 100 so yeah. fast. And you mix in TMZ. It's like all of a sudden, then you got labeled, you know, a madman for no reason. I feel like it, it, you really did get a bad shake. I mean, you brought some of it on your own, yeah. but you did honestly, get a bad no, shake. Honestly, no, honestly, I did bring some of it on my own. And, and, a, and a, hard, a huge part of it was on purpose. I think mentally, physically, emotionally, mentally, Physically and emotionally, I think I needed a break. I think I needed a break from my profession 
And like I said, it's unfair to the fans because I am getting paid millions of dollars to do it. But to be fair to myself, like I said previously, I needed a break. And everybody that knows me, everybody that are, are true friends with me, they're not worried about me. They're not calling and checking on me because that's how I act in front of them. It's just really crazy that they, the only thing that's a little crazy to them is that I can't believe Chandler Jones, my fucking best friend or my friend Chandler is being himself on Instagram live right now. Mm. Why is he letting everybody see him be himself? They're going to think he's crazy. Chandler, keep being that person. Keep being that person that you've always been. And for, hey, my name is Chandler Jones. I play for the Patriots. I play for the Cardinals. I play for the Raiders. Mm. You have media training? Yeah. 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 Think about it. Think about how fucked up that is. Media training. Yeah. Let a nigga get up here and say, hey, nigga, if, 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 I want, if I didn't want to disrespect Jackson's podcast, I would definitely be rolling up if this was some Snoop Dogg shit. I'm sorry. I'd be rolling up right now talking because if I'm sitting, if me and him in Memphis and he took me to Memphis to just break bread with me, if I can come to Memphis and call you, I would want to be somewhere rolling up, sit, sitting with the fellas. Yeah, why you don't let people roll up in here? You don't again? You don't you don't like no, it? Smell like next weed? Time, next time. No, I just I feel like the the hard part for me is there is a lot of fight fans right now that are young, 14, 15, oh, 16 okay. years old. And I just feel like them motherfuckers smoking weed too. I know, I know, but hey, if I, I was on like, Joe Rogan podcast, Joe Rogan may have a motherfucker rolling it up on there. True. I just feel like we're at, we're we're still a brand too that sell, we sell U chains, we sell to moms. Oh, okay. I feel like let those kids determine if they want to do that when they want to do it. Yeah. There's a party out here 24 seven anyways. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, you right know? now, kids, yeah. you shouldn't you shouldn't smoke weed until you get at least 18 because I started when I was eight, right? Yeah. And my memory's bad, and a lot of people think it's from fighting. And a lot of times I do blame. I say, oh, I don't. I'm sorry, I don't remember. I, I've been punched too many times. Yeah. But it's, John said same thing. Yeah, but it's from weed. Though. Weed. Yeah. Because yeah. my my memory my brain wasn't developed, and um I, I did some reading and stuff. You shouldn't you shouldn't smoke weed till you're like 21. So yeah. your brain is fully developed. Develop. Yeah, because my short term, my short term is my short term is really is really bad. And it makes you make improper decisions when you're when you're older. At least you have a more uh, consequence based mind, right? You know, if you mess up, you, there's consequences. When you're younger, you don't have those consequences, that fear of consequence. You don't yeah. understand if I drive drunk, I could kill someone. If All I'm right. smoking high, I could fall asleep and kill someone. I'm not saying don't do do whatever you want. You know, I'm not that guy. I'm just saying that let people decide. It on I'm their gonna own. say this though. What I've learned now that now they legalize everywhere, I would make sure I smoke organic only because they put they got all. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. He right. He yeah. right. They What's put he out, right about? When, when I when I the first, Zaza? when I went to the first Zaza, <laughs> that rapper weed. Yeah. When I went to the first psych ward, they told me the doctor told me that there was a there was a large amount of high school kids and college kids that are getting high amounts of psychosis because of the weed that I'm putting over the counters right oh, now. Wow. Yeah, they put the, chemicals in it. The weed, oh, that's, wow. the weed that's being served over the counters, the government's allowing, FDA is approving it, but it's a, it's causing kids to have psychosis. And that could be why I was having, yeah. the, that's why, that could be why I was okay. Cause I smoke, I smoke every day. I tell you, I smoke every, I met Rampage saw me smoke. He walked the other way. He was like, I don't smoke. I had to give him the the big suite at the hotel because he said I need two windows. <laughs> I did, and then I had to open that. Do shit they, do they um, piss text you once a year? We know when it's coming. If you if you fail an NFL drug test, you're you're stupid. You're not the smartest guy in the world. Mm -hmm. I, you see how I switched that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're I, nice. I, I said I ain't worried about none of yeah. the NFL guys <laughs> coming after me. Let, let, let me ask you a question. You and this is and just be honest with us. Yeah. You're totally aware of what happened, like I said, and mm -hmm. and I do want to make that clear that I, I and we've talked about this that you are aware of what you did and what you brought upon yourself, mm -hmm. and then what they amplified. So that's always a, a healthy start in rebuilding and coming back into the league mm -hmm. or coming back into yourself. You go into the ward. Were you already prescribed medicine or anything before this? No, no. So you go into this thing, and did it amplify this idea of now that you're you're not in control of your mind, or you may be out there because now you're in this place where you feel more insane? I am gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was one of those people, and I'm still one of those people that always said I don't want to take any medication. I was a natural. I don't want to take Excedrin when I get a headache. I drink water and duke it out. That's me. But since I went in this restraining order with my child's mom, I was in the psych ward. They said I couldn't get out of the psych work until I started taking something called Abilify. And it was about 30 milligrams of this medication called Abilify. And this, this medication causes me to be very drowsy at random times. To, even to this day, remember last night at, when we were at Nobu, mm -hmm. I was falling asleep. Mm -hmm. um, and the medication, they said that if I could get caught off of it, I could end up back in the psych ward. So that's what they do. They try to get you on medicine for the rest of your life. So, you so, pay for so it. now they're giving, they, they said that it's a $1,000 injection that they put in my shoulder or in my buttocks. A thousand dollar injection called a Bilify thirty milligrams, and they're, they're, I'm on that now. Have to be on it for a year, so I'm a, I'm a government lab rat for a year. But well, do you feel it's helping you? It's not helping me. It, it makes me calmer than I want to be. Very calm. Like, How often you got to take in, it? In situations like, say, if there was a fire alarm right now, if there was a fire outside, Lord, Lord forbid, arson, 
I would literally be like, guys, wait. Let's just make sure it's not in here. Well, how, how often do you got to take that medicine, though? They, they, they do it every... Every other every month, once a month, and they come to you and do I it. I gotta go to see them. I gotta go sit. I gotta go to this, this little place that looks like a shithole. People outside sitting on the ground. People outside. When last time I've been there, a dude took a shit like Smokey right in front of the building. It's the hood, mm. and you got a, you got a hundred million dollar man. Not to talk about my bank, but a hundred, you can look at you can look that up. A hundred million dollar man going to get a shot in the hood, bro, bro. That that ain't fair mm -hmm. to to make some to force somebody to take some medicine. For this long, yeah. you know, or, or you're gonna put him back in the hospital, or, or you, or they say I can't see my daughter if I don't take it. Yeah, yeah see, that's see, that's not right. Kanye was talking about that yeah. shit. I, I mean, don't you, see my you've daughter. You've been interacting with him, and you've seen how he interacts. Like Kanye was talking about. I that? don't feel anything wrong. He was talking about some. It was some shit like that happened to him. You know, he, I, yeah. I can't see my right now. I can't see my daughter. I haven't seen her since July. What's today's date? Today's January fifteenth. I haven't seen my daughter since July thirteenth, her birthday when she turned five. Wow. Yeah, listen, hanging out with him, he seemed like a regular dude, just smoke weed, you know. Yeah. When I used to smoke weed, that's what I used to do. I used to uh, talk about anything, joke, uh, laugh, and go into conspiracies. We just, you know, just like with normal shit, people do I, I've weed. been friends with him for a year or two, three years plus. He's been helping me since day one with Jackson, wearing it in the games, on yeah. the phone, FaceTime, everything. I hit him up after the games, always 100. Never saw anything. Now, I can't speak for people that live with you or things that have happened that I'm not there for, but for me as a person, everybody has to have their own opinions and their own, you know, theories based off their interactions. My interaction with him is he's always been amazing. So, I understand that. I just want to make that clear and one thing I did want to make sure is that people understood we didn't have you on here to make a joke of you or have you on here to talk about you how people have been writing certain comments. We had you on here to set the record straight and right. so you could speak for yourself and not just let these tabloids and these internet media companies just kind of clip you i'm here for the people rampage here for the people our community the jackson podcast community stands up and rallies behind the athletes we have on here i'll right. show you the text he, he brought you on here because he wanted to talk about your genitals <laughs> <laughs> he did he's like fuck i seen in print yeah. <laughs> yeah. i seen in print hey but can you get a, a second opinion from another doctor to tell him like look get him off this shit he don't need this i think i can but it's a court order now since i've been in psych work it's, mm. it's, it's now a court order so i don't know how since it's a quarter, I don't know how I get off. I think I got to be in it for a certain amount of time. And it's weird that the doctor, she even said the words to me, oh, uh, you get a review on this day, but I don't let anyone off. Like, how do, why would you tell me that you get a review on a day, but you usually don't let people off? Like, Wait, that's, why, that's like trying to spur you head. to go crazy more so you know, that way they is. really could keep you that's on? That's what it is. Yeah, what yeah it is. so it's, I was going to say this before. You know, um, think, but think about it, though. If somebody falsely accused you and you got to go through a psych ward for three weeks, think about that. Think about what, what type of um, mental space that puts you in, and, though. And being in a psych ward. And, and, you, and also, there are people, there's people that are in there that aren't crazy, but there's also crazy people that are in there stripping naked in front of you, calling you nigger. And the hard ER, and you can't do nothing because if you do swing at them, guess what? You're crazy too. How does that make you look hitting a crazy person? Right. Yeah. Did you have to spend any nights in jail? Yes. How many I nights? Spent two nights in jail. Jesus. What was jail like? Jail wasn't a fun experience. Man, they, they made me go in there. There was eight officers in a room smaller than small, probably like not even half of this room, probably just from this wall to this wall, right where you sitting. There was about eight officers in there. They made me put my hands on the wall, spread my ass cheeks, and they all laughed. They all just sit there and laugh with their arms lap behind behind their back. And it's a joke now, but in my mind, I'm like, I'm a man with a kid. One this one this dude kept talking about his husband. And I can never I can't forget this. He kept saying, My husband, my husband would like this, my husband. That's power, they power tripping. Yeah, in it's there, in Vegas. That was in Vegas. Yeah, that, that. He kept saying my husband. He's sitting there talking, he said, spread your ass. And they all laugh. And he said, My husband would like this. But I, I, can't, I can't forget that. And did you come to to Kind of peace with the, the, the Vegas police and all that. We it's, all good now. I, I, I have nothing against the police. That's the thing. You I know. It. I know. I'm supposed to fuck the police. Yeah. But those police officers. It wasn't the Vegas police that I'm saying fuck the police to. It's got the it. police officers that put their hands on me. That's on my page. Y'all go to Chan Jones and follow me on Instagram at Chan Jones. If y'all want to see it, I'm not going to. We, we gonna move past that. A lot of okay. that you archived last night. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I archived it. A oh, lot okay. Of it. Yeah. Well, okay. It's good. Well, you brought up the police, so I'll tell y'all what they did to me. Yeah. Fucking gave me a concussion, sprained my MCL, and said. Should yeah. I talk about that or no? No, I mean, uh, some of it, you could talk about it, but some of it, I just feel like I don't want to put you in a, in a, in a place where people then go and attack you or amplify no, all, your situation. No, all I want to say, all know? I want to say is yeah. the, the, the police, when they came over to my house, they said, let's talk about why we're here. Mm -hmm. Today is uh, January 15th, Monday at 325. I still don't know why they were there mm. tackling me, arresting me without a, without a warrant. Without anything, saying that they, they think about it, they said you're not in trouble. And my Instagram there's a video saying he said that, he said Chandler, well, you are not in trouble. Why do I have a concussion from you banging my head on my doorstep? And why 
is my MCL sprain and I still have a scar on my knee from it. Why did I have to get carried into that psych work that you guys said I need mental help at? Why did I have to get carried? Why did I get carried into there? No justice, no peace. You let them in your house? No. They came in my garage. The videos, they came in my garage. I shouldn't even, I, I didn't even have no, the nigga drew his, he drew his damn taser, drew his taser, came in my garage and tackled me in the ground just because it was a bitch I was with. It was on, it was on her. I got to be careful the bitches I'm hanging around with. So well, she she called him this time. Uh, no, she didn't call him, but it, she she told him some shit. She was just she was tripping. It's a different one. Different one. Oh. The one that was living with you. No, nope, different one from her. Oh, oh god damn, Jesus! What's up with these girls? Slow down, man. slow down. Mo money, mo. What's that? Yeah, mo money, mo. I got ninety nine problems and not ninety nine bitches. Hey, why don't you just why don't you just date a famous chick? They'd be more chill. You know, you famous, you rich. You know, <laughs> get a famous chick. You heard him? Did y'all hear him? Who you want? Who you want? J Lo. Who? You, yeah, <laughs> she's a little bit too yeah, old for you. You got a every line girl. Up. Every girl that I talk to, every girl that knows me, every girl that I talk to, they all they all want to get married. But I always tell them, if Jeanette Akel's ever available, you got to slide. Jeanette Akel? If Jeanette Akel's ever available. Who's hey, that? Who's that? You think you could lay I might have got way too high, high. I don't know who that one is. You don't know who Jeanette Akel is? I think I heard that hey, name. Hey, Benny, pull up Jeanette Akel. I might have got way too high. Look at her. Oh, oh my. yeah, yeah, she bad. My oh, yeah. milk of magnesia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah. milk of magnesia. Look at her. And we got the same scar under our lips. And we got is matching she single? Tattoos. I don't I don't care. Why don't you just DM yeah, her? Yeah, bro? Why you just oh, she's with Big Sean. I don't want to uh, do okay, yeah. I don't want to DM her. Wow. That's Big Sean right there next yeah. year? Oh, okay. That's Lil Sean. Did that echo five five? He what five six? <laughs> <laughs> you think you got a better chance than Big Sean? Nah, that's his, if that's his lady, I think that's his lady. I don't want to disrespect, but I love oh, her. Oh, they had a they had an I on and her. off on again relationship. Let me show y'all something. Let me show y'all something. What do you got? No way. We don't want to see no whoa, 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 Keep whoa, it all whoa. in your pants. This is a family show. Yeah. Let me show y'all something real quick. This is gonna be real quick because I'm in love all with right, but this. no body parts. It's my she got my whole arm. She got my right arm. That's how much you love her? That's her whole name. That's her whole name right there. Oh damn. Wait, what? Janae Echo Afiro Chalumbo. Wait, why wait, hold on. Time out. Wait, why do you have her name tattooed on you? That's my wife. That's my spiritual wife. Oh, he might end up. He might end up getting. Her. Wait, because you like her music? Is that why? Is that yeah, what we, inspired it's you? It's not even her music. Like I connect with her in a way where, like, have you ever met her? I've never met her. I never even communicated with this woman. But like, it's just like whenever I listen to her music, whenever I think of her, it just gives me calm frequency. Yeah, but uh, if y'all can that. play that song "Frequency" by her, no, don't play it. But listen to it. No, frequency. but I get what you're saying because this morning when we were having breakfast, you're like, no, no, put this song on so I can relax a little bit. Yeah, yeah and, that, and that who was that playing? So, Janaco. I mean, listen, sometimes people need music to relax. I need her to relax. And why, why you don't just slide in her DMs? Yeah, I know. That's, that's, she's a celebrity. How do I do that? I don't know. Man, you a celebrity. Yeah, what? I'm not a celebrity. She got like 8 million followers. I only got 700,000. Oh, who uh, cares, yeah, bro? Yeah. You got a Super Bowl world championship. You played for Bill look Belichick. At her, just look at her. Look at her. I you played for Bill me. Belichick. She's hey, a, talk to me about Brady. Oh, she's a songwriter as well? Yeah, she writes her own music, bro. You listen to her songs. She writes her own shit? Yeah, what do you th So what you say... As I speak these frequencies, as I sing these frequencies, speak to me. That's her saying that. Yeah, she's saying it to you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he gassing you up. You should slide her DM. Yeah, hey. yeah, hey, do it right now. Let me see your phone. I'll no, do it for no, you. No, hey, yes, I'll do it for you. Hey, no. you missed Because what if she's with Big Sean? Who's, who gives a fuck? You just say, hey, I like your music. Bro, you're on the Jackson podcast. Let's do it right now. Janae Aiko, no. slide in my man's DMs. No, I don't want to do six, seven. Because look, what if what if Big Sean, what if they might get married? What if you propose to her tomorrow? Then Big Sean going to write a diss song against you. He need, uh, listen, if if Big Sean don't propose tomorrow, I'm sliding in them DMs. All right, 24-hour <laughs> countdown. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? They're both celebrities, so if he proposes, it's going to be all out. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Not Bre tomorrow. I'll give, I'll give them like- Give them 24 hours. the month, because I think they just had a baby too. So. Oh, they just had a baby? Yeah, I think they had a baby. It says uh, on and off again relationship. They got a son. That's a hard one. It's on and off? That's what it said. Oh, it's an on and off? Yes. <laughs> hey, Tom Brady, break it down. Is he really the GOAT of he all quarterbacks? He is the GOAT. He Tell me why GOAT. Tom Brady is the best quarterback of all time. You played with him. His practice habits. He's a guy that say, fuck shit. I, I, just for <laughs> no, just for incomplete pass and practice. And nobody practiced that way. Fuck. Ah, like he'll yell. Like, I'm, I'm a guy that when I first got to NFL, I was on the Patriots. And... Uh, I was getting my ankles taped, and Tom came up to me and said, hey, Chandler Jones, it's a pleasure to have you on the team. As Soon as he walked away from me, I called my mom and dad. I said, Tom Brady knows my name. Mm. He knows my name. Mm. So I've always been a fan. So imagine getting the front row seats of your favorite player every day at work, watching everything he do, his mannerisms. One thing I, he used to always do, he, I don't know why he did it. I'm just saying some of my nicks that I realized about him. He 
he would take a tennis ball and put it under his non-throwing arm. No, his, his, yeah, his non-throwing arm and then throw with his little trainer. He'll put a tennis ball. I don't know why. I'll keep his, tyro, his, his spiral tight or something. But he would take a tennis ball and put it under his non-throwing arm and then throw. That's how he keep it tight. I'll I, I be doing that now. I'll be showing people, Tom Brady always do this. <laughs> what do you do for them? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what position you play? Defensive end. I sacked Tom Brady. I sacked them before. Did I sack Tom? No, right. Jimmy Garoppolo. Right. Uh, when I when I played football, I was a tailback. Mm-hmm. Every time I ran on the field, my coach said, "Hey, boy, get your tail back here." <laughs> <laughs> I let you play tailback. Me too. Like, I was, like, <laughs> no, no, no. I, no, I was a nose guard. Okay. I, I played one. My wrestling coach made me play. Damn, I really you had me. That's you, good for wrestling. Though. Yeah, that's good for that's real. Vice versa, both sports are good for each other. And yeah. is is Bill Belichick the greatest coach of all time? Yes. Really? Yes. You say that way, like I, yeah, out of there's doubt. No, there's no question. That Tell me why. Say right here. Tell me why. Well, what, right I, here. I, what I will say, what I will say is that there's not just one way to win. There's many ways to success, as we all know. There's more coaches that win. But what Bill's able to do, uh, you got to think, he's doing this with different depth charts. And that's when you know, that's when you start thinking, all right, is it the quarterback? No, because the quarterback can only take you so far. Um, but what Bill has, Bill has control over the players, not just based on his re- out of respect, but just because how he carries himself. I'll tell you a funny story I had with Bill. Um, Bill's such a mind guy. Sometimes he'll walk by you without even saying anything. And he's so in his head thinking about plays and thinking about football. You might think it's disrespect. So imagine if you got a, some, some hood-ass person that just signed to your team who's probably the leader of his whole hood, leader of a gang, let's say, right? And then you get, you see your new master. Not You call him masters because it's just your new, your new boss. You see your new boss walking down the hallway and he doesn't say hi to you. You might think, what the fuck did I do wrong? Why, why is he not saying hi to me? What do I need to do to, to play better? Oh, that's what it is. I need to play better. Then Bill Belichick's going Bill Belichick's gonna to say hi to me. He didn't even do that on purpose, but there's a few times where he walked by me. I'm just like, he didn't know he was pushing me to be better. How do I get Bill to say hi to me? Mm. Just because of how big his name was. How do I get Bill Belichick to even say hi to me in the hallways? And I, I, I bet you I'll tell him this story today. He'll be like, what? I didn't, I didn't walk by you. Just because I just know he's a mastermind. He always has a pencil in his ear. He just fucking waddles down. <laughs> fucking Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick. <laughs> Is he going to coach another team? Or he's just going to retire? I don't know. I think I think the media, I don't really think he got fired. I think it just rhymed with my song. I think he stepped down. He walked away. Mm. But usually when, when, when guys of that age, they walk away. It's because someone's like, hey, you got it. GTF. Get the fuck. Mm. Is, and as you look at like the, the landscape of the NFL right now, you feel healthy enough to come back this season? Man, I feel, the, and I'm not just saying this because, because I'm not playing right now, but I feel the most relaxed, uh, healthy, strong, strongest, explosive, powerful than I've ever been. Mm. Think, think, think about you got a racehorse, right? I'm not calling myself a horse. And he's been racing for 12 years, his whole life. And then he gets a year off to just be himself and just run around the woods just run, eat, eat whatever the fuck you want. Just a fucking lion. Fuck the horse. <laughs> go to the lion. lion. I got a lion tatted in him. Hey, go to the lion. Zoom in on that if y'all can. Yeah. <laughs> but, but a fucking lion. And, it's, and it's give him a year off just to be himself. And then throw him back in a controlled, in a controlled setting and then watch him. I hope and, that I hope that camera zoomed all the way in because that nigga's so black you can't see none of his tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> zoom in, please. Yeah, zoom we, in. we gotta guess it? what you got tattooed. Produ- producer, can you see? Wait, it, hold, uh, hold, okay. hold up. Put your hand out. Is that about John Jones' size of his hand? Nah, his hand's smaller than mine. I feel you. Yeah, you got, big, are you tall? My massive hands. hands. My arms look like hands. I'm taller than him. Or you got yeah. massive hands. Yeah, my dad got big. My granddad got hands. Big old hands look like a goddamn. Michelin man hands. What's your grandfather's name? Arthur Jones. They all Arthur Joneses. Uh, Arthur, Arthur, my dad, my brother, and his son. Senior, junior, third, fourth. How many kids you got? Just one. I got, uh, I said, yeah, just one. That's why I'm so tied up with this girl. She got me. If I had baby mamas, if I had a plural, oh, I'd just be like, all right, NFL, NFL. But it's she came and moved. She was living with me. I was living with her. They came running in her house when I was acting crazy. Like it was a lot. Yeah. And as you and as you look for the 2024 season, the 2025 season, are you uh, interested in trying out for a team? I would I would love to play, um, try out. I would try out for if, if it was the right franchise. If it's a franchise that really wanted to see me play, but I feel like at this day, at this day and age, I have so many friends that are head coaches and on staff. They they would know they would know how disrespectful it is to ask me to try out for their team. You mm. know what I'm That's like asking Ray Lewis. Uh, after after him taking a year off, hey hey, come try out for the for the Ravens or come try out. 
Try out. Mm. I'm Chandler Jones. 112 career sacks. All time on the all time list. There's only one person ahead of me, Von Miller. Well, probably some people probably put ahead of me because I had they gave me a year off. But those all these people that's ahead of me, they've been in the league before me. Yeah. I'm one of one, baby. I love it. Any, uh, te- any teams you want to play 100, with? 112 sacks. Whoever needed a sack master, call me. <laughs> any teams that catch your eye right now? I, I would love to play for the Raiders. Wow. I would love to play for the Raiders. Silver and black. He's still here. So I'm he still, still here. Yeah, they, was, they didn't do anything wrong. They're, 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 Mark Davis sent me a long-ass text message. He sent me a long... This is the owner for the Raiders. He sent me a long text message, pretty much basically saying the Raiders is all he has. This is all he knows. That's all he got from his family, his dad, Al Davis. Um... For him to say that from whatever I was going through, for him to reach out to me and between me posting people's numbers online and, and going back in that, I knew who I was posting the numbers online. I knew I was doing that. I knew who I, I, I did that on purpose. Obviously, I could have put fucking Tom Brady's number online, right? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but for Mark Davis to reach out to me and he texted me from his personal cell phone number, I still have his number. I should text him back. I did, but I have. I should text him back and ask him, "Can I get back on the team?" <laughs> hell yeah! <laughs> but that right, was that, that was here, hell yeah! That was, and promise you won't put his number online. But yeah, no, no, he knows I wouldn't do that. No, because I have his number. I won't put it online. It's just, yeah. but um, but yeah, I haven't. I haven't really talked to anybody from the Raiders or any higher ups, as you would say, from the mm-hmm. NFL or anything. They, they all have been just be rather watching me, seeing what I do, and see if mm-hmm. I crash like most guys, or see if I can fight back and get like Rambo. I feel like I'm really excited that you took time to actually like, you know, just be you and not try to not try to seek the validation or the attention, but really just kind of tell your story. Rampage, that you feel the same way. Like he's so honorable with it. I feel yeah, like. he, he's keeping it real. And that's I think that's what you got to do. Like some people like shit happened in the media and stuff like that. And they try to, you know, shy away from it. I feel like you just got to get in front of it and keep it real and tell and tell your side, you know. Right. Right. So you you've been doing great with that, and now you know what I'm saying it's, it's it's making sense, and 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 plus a lot of people have crazy baby mamas, but but I don't know I don't know why she would do something like that because it's only going to hurt her, it's and, her baby, and her and her and the, and the kid in the yep. long run. Yeah, you know what I'm saying it's going to it's going to like be embarrassing for you and 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 especially you going through some stuff, but. Like you paying child support and stuff, yep. correct? Yep. And everything, and yep. and you take do you take care of her her living and her, her house? living? She gets she gets child support and she get her her living house and taken care so of. So why she trying to hurt? Why she trying to hurt her bag? Because she figured out she figured the day she realized that hey Chandler actually fell out of love with you, Chandler can no longer love seeing himself with you. It said it's either Chandler's gonna be with me or nobody, mm. and this is the this the world has to suffer. The world has to have a break from Chandler Jones because she I chose nobody. Mm-hmm. So my personal love life caused. A lot of my fans would be upset, and that's true. My personal love life, I want to say sorry for, for choosing that person, but my personal love life caused a lot of people to be upset and caused me to seem crazy because she did put me in a psych ward. She did put me in jail, and, and that's public news. That's public knowledge. Yeah. So I could see why the Raiders reached out and said, hey, you know what? You need to handle this first, yeah. and then maybe we can handle you or we could talk to you. But but yeah. right now you're in, you're in and out of jail. You're in and out of psych wards. How do we, how do we come back? How do we go to our PR and cover this up? Yeah. I, I feel like the uh, the maturity you have right now of taking ownership of responsibility and understanding the placement that you're in, this being one of your first interviews, you know, like I, I keep on making the, the statement, you're aware, you're understanding, you're totally self-conscious of the decisions you made that led you down the wrong road. But just like any other athletic story of any athlete that was, you know, at the prime athleticism of their career is what I meant to say is that you can make that comeback. That this is going to be your your best story, your best chapter, because the comeback is always greater when you when you ride with the man up high, mm-hmm. right? When you're aware of what's going on and you believe in him, and you can like follow his way. Not to right. get spiritual, but it's good that you found a way out of this tunnel. I feel like you're coming out of this tunnel now. Right. I think next season will probably be one of your greatest football seasons of all time. Yeah, and, I, and the funny thing is, you use the word comeback. I hate that word comeback. I'm here. I never left. I'm, but you got to come back to the field. Yeah, yeah. But when you say come back and you say at the end of the tunnel, you make it seem like I'm looking way at the, for a light. I'm standing right there. As soon as I go like this, that sun's shining right on my head. Right on my head. And I get back in that tunnel and I look. And I go like this and I look right there and that sun's shining right on my head. But when people say come back, it feels like there was this huge setback for me. All of it, I'm telling you what happened in the media. My baby yeah. mama got me. I'm still yeah. chilling. Bro, it's really, yeah. it, when you I, think about it, it really no, ain't that no, bad. But it's, yeah. not a, it's not a comeback in terms of like yeah. you having to come back. I just mean you literally coming, yeah, coming back, back to the, the field. To the yeah. field yeah. It's just been one year. No, we I, all I know just, that. I just want yeah. to, I'm not, I'm not talking to you. I'm just talking yeah. about, I want to clear it up for these people. When they say, oh, chilling, come back from the CTE. You're going to come back, like make a oh, big yeah, yeah, yeah. comeback player of the year. Like I, if I come, when I come back on the team next year, 
I don't want him to win comeback player of the year because the shit that had me out is not even worth talking about. It's giving her more fame than she needs. Let's move on. That's why I'm glad that don't, yeah. nobody knows her name. I would never say her name. Yeah, let's move on. Then, right. and, and one thing I want to talk about off the break then is why is your brother getting so big right now? The GOAT. Rampage. Hey. <laughs> Rampage. He's getting a little thick right now. Hey, huh? he's, talk to him. Yeah, he, he moved the heavyweight. I can't say shit. I got thick too since last yeah. year. Yeah. I, I, I ain't finna knock him on that. Yeah. yeah but, but, you know, uh, us fighters, we look up, we look up to John as the best. Uh, fighter in the world you know he's the best he's of all time yeah for I, sure yeah i think even I, from you yeah he's wow. like, come on, he kicked my ass he t he, he's no but i mean it. even from you you feel he's the greatest fighter of all time yeah wow yeah I, I so the funny thing you saying about that me and john before he came around you were the greatest fighter of all time that's what that's what we were no what i wasn't though because he's he's never lost no, no, I'm talking about before John got in the UFC. That's how yeah. me and John view, we view Rampage as the greatest fighter of all time. Well, I, well, damn. My, yeah, great. I'm, I'm telling y'all that right now. Like, that's yeah. how we view Rampage Jackson. Greatest. You watched a lot of his fights growing yes, up? Yes, nigga, we wow. sit there and watch this shit on TV on YouTube. That's all we had was YouTube. We didn't even have cable. We had YouTube. <laughs> we watched shit on YouTube. That's I how we type it. Rampage I Jackson. I love it. Yeah, no, he, he, he's the best. He, he never lost. He's Unbelievable. Never lost. And is he going to come back? Yeah, he'll be back. He'll be back. He was getting ready to fight Steve Bay, and that fluke shit happened. He had to get surgery, and. Now he's just kind of sitting around eating, but John is John. He got that warrior mentality. He'd be all right. He's going to be more than all right. Had to be crazy growing up with him, huh? He was a different dude. He's always been different. He went to a different middle school than us. Why? I don't know why. My parents put him in a different school. Well, you didn't get along with the kids? No, no. He went, it's just John. Just John has to go to this school. John has always had to be separated from, from the norm. From the football boys? Always. John's just always different. He's did he go to all, all boys school or something? He did. Mm. John went to jail. I can see that. Him. I can see that in him. He was in jail. He had he went to jail for for the the woman that he's with now. He went to jail for her. Somebody said something slick out of their mouth. He went to jail for that. What? Yeah, early, early in his career. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so he can't talk shit about me being in jail. I'm like, John, you been in jail? I went to jail for the most PG thirteen crime. Before we go, I don't want to. I didn't want to spend too much time talking about John Jones because hopefully he's coming on the show courtesy of you. And I, I FaceTime yesterday, super respectful, super kind. And to have the goat on here is going to be amazing. I want him to spend this show being able to just talk to you and letting people see the side that I get to see of you that I appreciate. And I want to make one thing very crystal clear to everybody in the audience. We don't condone anything of uh, misbehavior or the things of that nature when it's domestic, your family and, and anything of that nature. The thing that we do though, is we, we definitely let people speak for themselves mm -hmm. and we definitely allow people to tell their story and let the audience kind of dictate what they believe. Mm -hmm. And one thing about me and you and our relationship is that i really appreciate the honesty you've had for me because for me, because every time he's done something that may be wrong in the news and it, he owes me this never you know i'm not his dad i'm not his family member i'm his friend he doesn't owe that to me well, but he'll call me up and say chandler are you all right like i know i read this but chandler are you all right and he always answers his phone and he's very respectful the whole time because i'd get on his neck like yo take that down you don't need that and he'd always say you know what you're right everybody around me telling you, me you'd you be on his neck yeah no oh, not oh, little oh. pause pause hey, <laughs> hey, yo, hey, yo. Yo. what do you want to see huh <laughs> hey, hey, no. hey, he get all excited hey, for the live i'm just repeating what you Big said print, no but he yeah. just he i just do know that deep down underneath the 6'10", whatever, however tall you Six are. Five. Yeah, he's he a good person. And I think everybody's going to see that this year. As long as you stay focused, I feel like it's an amazing platform for you to show that to the audience and they'll see that and we'll see you this year on the, on the, on the field. No, seriously, I just want to say thank you for allowing me to tell my side of the story because uh, without this podcast, honestly, I don't really have a PR right now. I don't have someone to say, hey, Chandler, these people want to talk to you. I don't have uh, any any friends that own podcasts that I'm as close with. Mm -hmm. And uh, for you to fly me out here, give me a hotel, uh, Give me sneakers and give me all this cool gear, and uh, I, this is something I'll never forget. And this 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 could make me a little emotional, but I feel like out of all the stories I wanted to tell, this this is the one that I really wanted to get out and needed to get out because my name has been tarnished. Mm -hmm. It's really been tarnished, and uh, I'll be fine, and I know I'm gonna be fine. But but what's at jeopardy is my career, mm -hmm. and I'm not ready to, to retire. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, and with that honesty and, and that respect and humility, I think there's no reason we wouldn't see you on the field. And I think everybody's going to see that as well. And uh, I definitely appreciate it. Like Thank I said you. from the jump, you a hundred millionaire man. Yeah. You would take my free hoodies and help me start my brand two, three years ago when we, you know, teamed up with my partner with Jackson. You was the Thank first one guys. there to support me in in, in Vegas. Yeah, Thank so, you guys both. I appreciate Rampage, both of you. Thank you. Yeah. Man, it was good. Thank you for too, allowing man. this yeah, to happen sure, too, yeah, Rampage. Always, yeah. All right, yeah. we out. Jackson podcast. Chandler Jones. We'll see John Jones on here soon. Make sure you guys go check out his MMA highlights. We about to go get a sparring session in. Yeah.